Every Christmas, I give myself a gift. I write a video that requires me to abuse a dream motorcycle. But this year, it turns out I've been abusing a dream motorcycle for months. And the gift was remembering why. Can I get 10 Timbits, please? 10? Actually, sorry, uh, 20? Thank you. So a buddy of mine flew south for uni and left me his Honda Rune. There's some funky cruiser built on the 5th gen Goldwing Boxer, and 70K on the clock, and useful luggage, She's been my ride to work beater since the snow set in. So each Tootsie gets three cylinders to cozy behind. Most cruisers weigh a ton, but this one weighs an honest Ford half ton. Only it doesn't accelerate like an F-150 because 80% of its torque lands at idle. It pulls like an astronomical constant. It pulls like gravity. And the yardage! And this headlight is a foot long. The tank extends 32 inches from my crotch. That's quite a manly sensation. When I was 11, I used to sneak into my dad's garage to sit on his motorcycle, and the rune lets me feel that again. Like I'm a wee timbit, and it's so big, so powerful, so heavy, I have a whole grown-up world to look forward to. So, what's the story? was the night before Eichmann at Red's focus group when everyone fell in love with Concept T2. One guy famously says, I'd buy one today. It's just too bad Honda can't make it this way. Pure chrome is too expensive to mass produce. The horn won't pass emission. Unlit caboose. So Honda scratches function, performance, and price. Their engineer's one goal, just make it look nice. These are actual quotes from project leader Masanori Aoki. No performance goals, no distinct function, purchase price not a consideration. If for the first time a major manufacturer would build a bike whose only goal was to look like the concept and be road legal. The process ends up costing 225 million. Honda never admits it, but VIN records put sales as low as 1485, meaning the manufacturing value of each rarity is over $150,000. Whee! <laughs> I wonder what artist drew this bike so long. Some poor engineer had to design this massive parallelogram to let the front axle trail nine inches behind the pivot point, but just so the wheelbase stays rideable. Oh, oh, oh. The big girl twirls like a sugar plum fairy in deceptively short wheelbase. And Honda links the brake, so stepping the rear activates one of the front pistons too, meaning I can decel in a tight spot without my hands having to do two jobs. And that pressure goes through a delay valve, so there isn't even any steering chop. Whee! For how unexpectedly nimble it is, the rune is exactly as stable as it looks. Hawaiian, right? It's 
See, if you attach a wheel to a stick, it wobbles. So motorcycles tilt the steering axis to create something called caster angle. That makes the wheel self-correct. But there's another type of caster effect called caster displacement. By trailing the axis of rotation behind the steering axis, like an office chair or a shopping cart, we also get self-alignment. Now I see why the rune is so planted. Its trailing link fork creates extra caster angle and acres of caster displacement. A combination so stable, it's been my go-to on snowy mornings. Only an artist would draw a silencer this chody. Because the engineer sees header, 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 and then open air just 16 inches later. Hmm. My Beamer engine, half the size, has four times the pipe to kill decibels and hydrocarbons. Only one shape could make this length pass, an aerodynamic back pressure funnel. The single piece so complex, Honda cast it using a 5,000 year old lost wax method. The negative makes a wax positive, which is coated in ceramic. Baked until the wax drips away. Injected with molten metal then shattered to reveal the final part. Total sacrifice manufacturing. Now each mold dies in childbirth to one single part. And if you gotta cast a muffler tip with aeronautical precision, you gotta break a lot of eggs. She starts low, mournful, but if you twist its titty, you begin to hear this underlying scream. I think that's the sonic vortices of back pressure, or possibly the lamentations of women and children. You know, what surprises about the Rune is not that Honda made it look like a concept bike, it's that they made it work like a production bike. And it's a concept without the concept riding experience. Hmm. Well, we're at work. Let's work on pricing out how Honda did it. This headlight is a teardrop to match the tank shape, the trim shape. If I scratch this, it costs $2,672. This radiator grill, it's a teardrop, but the one tacked onto the concept was for a 22 horsepower bike. And this gold wing engine makes 118, hence the wings two radiators. So Honda used ultra conductive alloy to make this one shed the heat of two. And if I kicked a rock into it, $1,572. Not a single button from the parts shelf. Everything teardrop machined for the Rune. This master cylinder alone, 1,350. Even the engine guards, they're always just a piece of bent tubing, but here, seven-sided, continuously flaring polished stainless. $1,010 each. No wonder it weighs so much. I cannot find a piece of plastic. Those teardrop lost wax muffler tips are rumored to cost $1,300 a piece to manufacture and priceless to sell because Honda did not cast extras. And this chrome parallelogram, $18,000. If I'd low sided this morning, I'd have written it off five times over. How did Honda ever sell this for 27 grand? All we're really seeing at this point is there will definitely be less than one per dealer. Probably we're looking at if you already don't have a deposit on one, you probably won't get one. They're going to be very limited in number. It is intended to be very much a sort of limited production, you know, high profile, high prestige model. I realize now that my angle was wrong. It's not that Honda just lost 150 grand per bike, it's that they spent 150 grand to build each bike without ever planning to charge it back. Each rune came with a color-matched keepsake book. Each owner got a personal toll-free service line. The only reason I'd never come across this dream motorcycle is because they're mostly in collections. And here I've been flogging one to work like a rented husky. Ugh. But remember, I only know how special the stability is by riding through snow. I wouldn't know how nimble it is if I hadn't risked my shortcut. 
So what good is owning a dream thing if you don't live the dream? Own experiences. Merry Christmas. It is a machine that comes along once in a lifetime or once in a dream. Thank you.